In my opinion, the quality build is the best build to make in Dark Souls 3. If you've been engaging in PvP, you should know why. Having 40 strength and 40 dexterity allows you to use a lot of different weapons with the refined infusion to gain the maximum amount of physical scaling damage. No split damage means that you're inching out every piece of damage you can and you have access to a wide range of weapons and you can mix up your playstyle as much as you want. Now before we continue, I want to let you guys know there's absolutely no PvP in this video. This is purely a build breakdown or an update to my quality build. If you want to see the PvP, you can click the link in the right hand side of the screen that just popped up. That will take you to to my latest PvP montage, so to speak, where we absolutely just showcase the power and the absolute decimation of other enemies in PvP. Now, getting on with the actual build, what I've done here is I've gone ahead and made a build that's under 30% rate ratio, which, if you guys don't know, um, can be extremely powerful when coupled with very fast weapons, things like the Chaos Blade, the Karthus Curve Sword general straight swords like the Goddard Twin Swords, you have the ability to gain an extra far roll, an extra invincibility frame, and recover your stamina faster. Coupled with increasing stamina equipment like the Stamina Ring and Green Blossom, you can just absolutely dictate and rush down the opponent constantly. If you want to see us using the Chaos Blade and absolutely de uh, devastating enemies, Click the links on the right hand side of the screen again, that will take you directly to pure Chaos Blade gameplay where we absolutely just rip through the competition. Now aside from having the ability to mix up your play style and play like something a little bit more faster, you also have the ability to go more of a tank build and play a little bit more conservative or a little bit more focused on the trade as I like to call it. So you can definitely adapt your play style as you can see here we put on some heavy armor our absorption goes up to around 25% which is quite good and we can swap out our weapons for something heavier like the refined Lothric Greatsword, uh, Glaives, Dragon Slayer Spear and other heavy weapons. Now of course when you equip something like the Lothric Greatsword you're going to be over 70% weight which you don't want to be because when you're over 70% weight you fat roll or you have that kind of heavy roll as they call it and you lose an invincibility frame and you don't roll as far which makes you easy to catch when you try to roll away from enemy attacks you'll most likely get caught so what we want to do is after we cast our tears of denial because as you guys can see here we have tears of denial as our only spell after we cast our tears of denial we swap out our priestess ring for the uh, havel's ring or havel's ring as i like to call it as you can see, our intelligence drops from 15 down to 10, which means we will no longer be able to cast Tears of Denial, but we don't need to cast it anymore because we've already casted it once, and it's going to last us for the PvP match. But equipping the Havel's Ring will allow us to be under the 70% weight ratio and allow us to gain a little bit of an advantage using heavy armor and a heavy weapon while being able to utilize the, the normal roll or the medium roll. Um, this is one of the tactics that I like to not necessarily exploit, but... Uh, used to gain a little bit of an advantage if you will if you will so we have 14 attunement and um, tears of denial can definitely play a huge role in winning out pvp matches especially when your opponent is a lot smarter and a lot more um, adept to your play style you're gonna have to fish for trades a lot more and having that extra hit before you die can definitely play a huge role and something i've noticed is that if you have the blessed fist weapon and then you swap out your life ring for the sun princess ring um, you're gaining about 5 HP every 1 to 1.5 seconds. So if your Tears of Denial does get activated, you just got to you know space out some area between you and your opponent, and they won't be able to kill you with things like a Throwing Knife or Armor of Thorns, which takes off 1 HP um, if, you, if they roll into you. Because you'll be able to regain about 5 HP within the second, which makes you immune to Armor of Thorns. You, you survive a few seconds, you won't die from a Throwing Knife, etc., etc., so with that said, um, there are a few tactics with ring swapping. As you guys know, I'm pretty big on ring swapping. Um, if you don't use a heavy weapon and you're using something that's kind of like a medium weapon, uh, after you cast your priestess ring, I really recommend going to the shield ring. Um, this will allow you, if I sit down here, to gain a ton of absorption in uh, the actual PvP match. And this ring does not seem to be nerfed or nerfed all that much in PvP, which means the first hit you take, you'll be absorbing pretty much you know a, a really good uh, amount of, of the damage that you take and what's nice is if you take that first hit and say you lose about 150 hp as you can see here with our build we have 1801 when we use the life ring the ring of favor plus two and we have 39 health if we lose let's say around 150 hp the normal strategy is to swap out the life ring for the sun princess ring which drops us just about 150 hp 
and we go back up to basically full health, which means our, sh our shield ring reactivates. We get another free hit um, or another free uh, chance to take take a hit without taking the full damage from the opponent, which essentially cuts damage in half more or less um, because most heavy weapons in the game, uh, or sorry, not heavy, most fast weapons in the game deal around 400 points of damage. As you guys can see, the refined Karthus, uh, Karthus uh, sword, sorry, um, the Chaos Blade, they deal around 400 damage, these faster, more popular weapons, even the Goddard Twin Swords, um, and even to some degree like uh, heavier weapons like the Claymore and the Glaive. So having around 200 points of actual defense to absorb can make a huge amount of, of difference in the beginning part of a PvP fight and really help you um, fish out a trade that's in your favor maybe once or twice, etc, etc. Of course, once you get hit twice with the Shield Ring, um, you might want to swap this out. In this case, you might go to the Farron Ring or the Leo Ring if you're using a thrusting weapon. Um, even the, the Havel's Ring if you want to go back to using a heavier weapon or something or mix up your playstyle. Or even just equip a second weapon in the offhand um, just so you can swip, uh, swap out to it and mix up your playstyle as well. A lot of different options with this quality build. The ring swaps, the armor setup, the playstyle adaptation. And that is what, in my opinion, makes it so good. Now, of course, the other thing that makes it so good is the fact that you can use pretty much any weapon you want. You have access to some of the best weapons in the game with maximum amounts of scaling. You have the glaive, you have the dragon slayer spear, the Thrall Axe, which is an amazing weapon to kind of finish off opponents with. This, this hitbox is really, really underrated. Um, and it, and you know, just swip, uh, swapping out to it and using it as a fast weapon can definitely catch opponents off guard. You can use the Rapier in an offhand for the parry and the poke abilities. Of course, I don't have it equipped on me, but you can use an S-Stock. You can use Katanas. The Chaos Blade is amazing for quality builds, and I've already discussed that in a specific Chaos Blade-esque build. You have access to the refined uh, Karthus Curve Sword, refined Goddard Twin Swords. Uh, daggers for criticals, as you can see here, the criticals on some of these daggers is 140. So if you are a parry monster, me personally, I'm not, but you can easily have this in your offhand, parry somebody, swap out to the dagger, and deal a ton of damage to them. Um, you have access to heavy weapons like the refined Lothar Greatsword, Black Knight Great Axe, uh, Black Knight Great Sword, all of those things, and of course you have access to a lot of different great, like just standard great swords as well. So you have, you have access to pretty much every weapon in the game, and you and you're going to be doing the most amount of damage thanks to the um, split scaling in physical between strength and dexterity. Again, dealing pure physical damage means that you're not getting any split damage defense. You're not getting any huge damage reductions when you hit your opponent. You're just straight bossing them, so to speak. So that is my is, is my reasoning for why the quality build is the best. And if you're struggling in PvP, um, I'll put up my stats on the screen. If you make a build that's essentially like this, you will, I guarantee you, improve so much just, just for the fact of having a good build and uh, having good armor and having the good weapons able to win out trades and able to space out your opponents. If you want to see actual tactics for PvP, of course, just watch any of my weapon analysis breakdown videos. I outline specific strategies for just general playstyles in PvP and specific weapon strategies as well. But just quickly breaking down the stats here, I mean, I know I'm level 125, but you could probably go down to level 120. Just take a little bit of points off of um, health and endurance, not too much though. Uh, just about 5 points, obviously, uh, between the two of them. But at 39 health, 14 attunement, and 40 endurance, that will allow us to have, again, like I mentioned, 1801 HP when we equip the life ring uh, in ember form with the ring of favor. The 40 endurance will allow us to have 177 stamina with the ring of favor plus 2. The 14 attunement gives us the 2 attunement slots and a little bit of extra FP to work with, but the 2 attunement slots obviously there so that we can use Tears of Denial. Now, our strength and dexterity up to 40 and 40, obviously, for the scaling. You could obviously scale back strength a little bit if you like to two-hand your weapons like I do because when you two-hand your weapons, you gain about a 50% strength bonus. So uh, for those of you that are wondering, the 50% um, cap will... Oh, sorry, the 40% the, uh, the soft cap will, will be able to be hit at 27 strength when you're two-handing a weapon because a half of 27 or 50% of 27 strength would be 13. Um, or 13.5, and then when you two-end your weapon, you gain that 13 points of strength uh, allocation onto your strength stats, so you're essentially bumped up to 40 strength if you two-end your weapon. So you could go a little bit less on the strength as well if you wanted, and put points a little, uh, some other places, maybe vitality, maybe more health, if you wanted to. Um, but having 40 strength, if you wanted to one-hand your weapon, you're still getting maximum amounts of scaling at the soft cap. Um, our intelligence stays at the base of 9, same with our luck, which is the starting points or the starting values for the knight. And we pumped up faith from 9 to 10 
just so that we can equip the priestess ring, get the extra five points of faith, cast our tears of denial, and then swap out that ring, the priestess ring that is, for another ring that we that we would use in PvP, like the Havel's ring, like the Lloyd Shield ring, or something like that. So that is why this build can be so effective. There's a lot of versatility, a lot of adaptability within the build, and you can really tear shit up, just solely speaking. You can absolutely annihilate everything. So if you want to check it out, I will link the PvP on the right-hand side. Again, I'll link a few uh, different builds, or a few, not builds, a few different uh, PvP montages, PvP matches. Go ahead and check those out and just see how, how good you can be with this build. Leave any comments and questions in the uh, comment section below, guys. I'll be happy to take a look at them and see what I can do to help you improve. But hope you enjoyed. That's it for now. Quantum is out.